fantastic. So my name is Reza Rockney. I'm a uh, developer advocate at Google. And in this session, we're going to be talking about um, machine learning inference with Apache Beam. In terms of the agenda, we're going to cover uh, inference itself and how we can encapsulate that within a P-transform. We're going to talk about two different modes. The first mode we're just going to touch lightly on, which is remote mode. This is where we're making a call out from a do fund to a service that's hosting uh, the model. Um, that, act, that pattern is actually very similar to many other uh, uh, patterns that we see in Beam. And so we're actually going to concentrate most of the talk on the local mode where we pull the model in, into the workers. Um, there's a lot of boilerplate with this activity if you're hand customer uh, calling the model within a do fund. And so then we're going to talk about the uh, utility provided by TensorFlow Extended Run Inference, uh, which takes away a lot of the boilerplate and productionization work uh, that you would need to do. Um, uh, we will run a demo with a notebook to, to show some of that. And then we are going to use the expressive power of Apache Beam's pipelines to be able to run multiple models within the, 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 the within one uh, pipeline. Uh, so this will be taking a model and branching, uh, sequential models, uh, just to show how easy it is with the, the SDK to actually build up these more complex shapes of a uh, 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 directed acyclic graph, which is the pipeline object. Um, and then finally, uh, the, the run inference transform from TFX is concentrating on TensorFlow. We'll talk about what the community in Beam is doing um, over this year to actually make this boilerplate utility work uh, available for other uh, frameworks. So um, with that, just thought, thinking about inference itself. So this is the activity of taking a trained model, providing data to the first layer of that model, and calling a prediction against it. For example, it may be uh, in the syntax model.predict uh, and uh, getting predictions uh, out of uh, the model. Now, if we uh, look at this pattern and refer back to uh, our standard P transform, which is the operation that we have in a beam pipeline, here we can encapsulate the, the code for making the prediction. And as um, as you'll know with uh, uh, all the talks within the, the academy, um, a P transform will generate a P collection. The code P collection being a distributed uh, collection of uh, immutable uh, uh, objects. Um, if we take uh, the P transform and apply it to the pattern that we saw uh, at the start there, essentially our data going into the model now becomes a P collection. Uh, so this parallel collection contains all of the data that we want to uh, run into the model. The P transform is going to encapsulate our call to the model itself. And at the, as a result, we're going to have a P collection, which is going to contain the predictions that we uh, have generated. This will then become a P transform that we can put into a beam pipeline. And the, the nice thing is that uh, it, it can be as simple as we have a source of information, we're reading it, parsing it, then doing the prediction, and then moving it onto a sync, so a very sequential uh, pipeline. Or it can be a pipeline with many branches and, and joins where uh, the prediction just forms one part of the whole uh, uh, processing pipeline. And again, this is being beam. Um, we know that the, if the, the source of the data, instead of being files, is a stream of information, for example, coming from Kafka, um, we don't actually have to change the P transform. So our P collection just becomes unbounded. The transformation uh, encapsulated in P transform will do the predictions. And our P collection will have a continuous stream of uh, uh, data coming, into, coming out of, of the, the call. Going into the specifics of how we encapsulate the call. Uh, the, the first one we'll touch on is remote mode. We're doing this for completeness. Um, and essentially in a remote mode, uh, we take the data within a DoFont and we make an RPC call to an API service um, uh, in a, a external to the pipeline. Um, this may be a, a service that you set up yourselves on, on containers, Kubernetes, et cetera, which hosts the model, or it could be a managed service. Um, and then essentially in this model, the uh, beam pipeline is being used to read and prepare the data to make the call out and then do the post-processing of the prediction uh, downstream. Uh, this pattern is actually very similar to many other patterns within beam where a do fund is getting information from outside of the pipeline, 
Um, for example, when you're pulling information from a database uh, to do some enrichment. And uh, some of the standard uh, considerations in that model come into play here as well. So normally uh, we would want to do things like, for example, grouping into batches to actually reduce the admin of making the RPC call. So there's more data going back and forth with each, uh, with each call. Um, strongly recommend the use of the group into batches utility transforms that exist in Python and Java. Uh, these have become quite comprehensive and um, you know, we can adjust things like the number of elements, the byte size, which you may need for uh, the API that's being called. And then in terms of error handling, you'll probably need to deal with things like exp you know, putting in some exponential back off code just in case there's a temporary glitch in, in the API service you're calling um, to be able to, to recover from that and not to cause too much back pressure, um, then there may be data that just doesn't, uh, uh, isn't able to, to proceed. So the data uh, has some errors in it and therefore we probably wanna build the div letter Q. Um, again, as this uh, area is fairly common in Beam, we, we won't spend much more time on, on this type of uh, prediction call, uh, but we will uh, spend the rest of the talk around the local mode. Now in local mode, what we're doing is uh, within the P transform, we're going to pull the model onto the, 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 the system. And in memory there, we're going to be able to do the, the prediction calls. So in this mode, now we have lots of folks on, on Apache Beam actually doing this um, using custom hand-built code. So they will, uh, within the DoFon, take on quite a lot of what is really boilerplate work. So, um, uh, and, and we, I say boilerplate because independent of the model, the same code would need to be uh, uh, reused. So um, they will do things again, like batching for uh, efficiency. So batching the, the, the call that we, we pass to the model. Um, models can be quite uh, large. And so they will probably want to make use of um, the utility class shared.py, which is uh, part of the Python packages in Beam. And essentially what that does is it creates a weak reference to the model and shares it across many threads. And they want to do something called key forwarding. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, you'd also probably want to build, uh, as you're productionizing this, a lot of standard metrics. So you're, there are things about the, the, the time it takes to do the predict call, uh, the, the size of the batches, et cetera, um, any potential errors. All of these are standard metrics that you want to, to attach to the code. Um, again, dead letter handling, so uh, dealing with uh, data that is problematic, um, making sure that the pipeline doesn't fail just for a few uh, poor data elements. Um, and more sophisticated use cases would be where you will use uh, things like global side inputs, et cetera, uh, with an impulse to be able to refresh the, the model while the stream is running. So uh, getting a new model to the DoFund. Now, uh, as you'll see, quite a lot of this work is essentially common across uh, uh, many uh, models. And um, for some, not all of those things, what we can use is actually the utility class uh, from uh, TensorFlow Extended, uh, the TFX BSL library specifically, which has a run inference transform, which has productionized a lot of those common boilerplate um, uh, activities. So uh, if you haven't been to the talk that was just before this one, uh, which Robert Crow gave around TensorFlow Extended, just two seconds, um, uh, TFX is uh, ML Ops uh, framework. Uh, it allows you to do all those uh, ML up activity in a um, uh, in its in its uh, components, um, and it actually makes use of uh, Beam in the data processing components. For example, e example gens, this section, etc. These actually translate to Beam uh, code that that is run. Now the TFX library, and by the way, um, if you didn't go to the talk, it would be uh, and you want to hear more about TFX, I would recommend looking up um, uh, Robert's talk on TFX uh, in the, the Academy uh, and sorry, college. And um, uh, one of the utility classes that TFX gives us is run inference. Now, run inference is a productionized inference transform that is doing things like batching the inputs. It has got uh, both a local mode and a remote mode via AI platform predictions. Um, in local mode, it does do things like taking care of using share.py. So the model in memory is shared across the threads. It has a common set of metrics already built in and it deals with key forwarding. Um, we're gonna actually do a demo of this. And as we're really looking at the uh, data engineering here, 
and picked a super simple model. Um, it's a linear regression model that has essentially been trained on the five times table. Um, so it's uh, very simple, as we'll see uh, from this code snippet. So essentially, the model um, has an input of a float 32. It has one dense layer. And this really is just to uh, give us a, a play model to work with within the, the, the data engineering uh, piece. Given a float 32, it's going to use the information that it has learned from and uh, give us a, a prediction. Before we get to the demo, um, a little bit more on key forwarding. So what do we mean by this? Uh, imagine we have a uh, model that is um, uh, providing us information about what is in an image. So given an image, it may predict that it may say that it thinks it's a bicycle in, in that image. Now, if we were to just give a P collection of bytes, so just the images to the, 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 the transform, um, the output would be the results. So we would have a P collection that contains bikes, chairs, et cetera. However, that in and itself is not useful to us because we will need the context, uh, in other words, the ID of the image that created that prediction. So for all the post-processing steps, we need the key associated with that. So we would want image one had a chair in it. So uh, the uh, 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 run inference uh, transform provides a bunch of signatures, uh, including uh, the ability to pass in a key value pair and get a key prediction uh, at the end of it. Um, so with that, let me just move over to the demo environment. Okay, so I'm in a uh, notebook. I am uh, using uh, the 1.70 version uh, and uh, the Beam version is 2.38. Um, I'll be making use of uh, this import uh, for uh, the run inference itself. I have hidden most of the other cells to do with building the model and, and, and getting um, serialization and stuff uh, in place. Um, going straight to our first run with run inference. So as I said, we've got a key value pair. If you recall, the, um, uh, the model is essentially been trained on the five times table and we need to send it a float. The, uh, in order to do this, I have created a small table in BigQuery, which is uh, Google Cloud's data warehouse in the cloud. And um, uh, in that, I have a table with two simple columns. The first column is, some, is a string, first question, second question, third question, et cetera. And the second column is a float. Um, so these are the numbers that we're gonna pass to the model and it's gonna give us our prediction. Uh, in this case, it's been trained on the five times table, so it's going to do the its best effort at getting this correct for uh, one of five times by five, for example. Um, the uh, uh, the pipeline itself. So before we get into the post processing task, we'll look down here. We have the pipeline creation uh, pipeline object being created with pipeline options. Um, for those not familiar with the Python syntax uh, for Beam, we have. Um, the pipe operator, which essentially means apply. So to the pipeline, the first thing I'm going to apply is the transform read from BigQuery, and I'm providing it a table name. This is going to go and read the information from that BigQuery table. It's going to generate a, a, a P collection of table, table rows. And after that, I chain uh, the beam map, uh, which is this lambda function against that table row. So this is going to convert that table row into a tuple, uh, which is the um, string, which is that question, and a serialized format for the uh, number. Uh, the model uh, I you have used uh, TensorFlow's uh, signatures, uh, and I have a function in there which turns that serialized format into a float32. Um, that's outside the scope of this, this talk, but if you go to the TensorFlow documentation and look at signatures, there's quite a lot of uh, useful, powerful utilities there uh, in, in the form of tf.function. So um, the output of this is going to be uh, a P collection with these tuples. We will then pass it to our run inference transform. And the nice thing about run inference, it's really nicely composable because all the configuration is just passed as a property. So here um, we use run inference, uh, we know the signature, and we're just telling it to use a model that exists in a uh, global, uh, global, um, Google Cloud Storage bucket. So it's an object store. So go get the model uh, from this location. It's going to do all the work of uh, running the, the, the prediction for us and give us an output. Now, the output of this is a P collection of predictions, which I 
and then sending to a uh, fun, uh, a do fun. And this do fun is really here just to pretty print the output. Um, the run inference transform has a stable output, which is uh, in the form of a prediction log. And this is a proto buff uh, that uh, I um, uh, examine and create a nice string to output in my final uh, map, which is just simply print within B. So um, if I'm just going to run this. It may take a few seconds while it goes and gets that information BigQuery, uh, uh, makes it available uh, to the model and runs it. OK, we can see that it restored, it, it, it restored the, the model parameters and stuff uh, in this step. But here, we actually see our output. So um, for the fourth question, the input was 1013. And the output is 5065, ignoring uh, the rounding. So our little toy model isn't doing bad that it's five times stable. Um, now, this was a very simple uh, pipeline coming back to um, uh, the slides. Uh, that pipeline was reading some information, running prediction, getting our output. But the nice thing about Beam is that we can build quite an expressive pipeline with branches and joins, et cetera. So it's very trivial to actually add multiple models into the same uh, pipeline. Uh, this allows us to build quite complex uh, uh, DAG shapes with uh, the P transforms. And of course, they don't have to be the same model. It can be multiple different models that are used within the same pipeline. So to show this, we're going to take a, the, the first example, which is doing a branch. Um, and why is a branch useful? Uh, one example would be A-B testing. So this is where, uh, for example, let's imagine we have a source that has uh, users. We divide these users into two groups at random and send the different groups to a different version of, of the model uh, and compare the results. So uh, a very uh, straightforward and, and simple pattern. In terms of doing this for the demo, I need another model uh, to show this. Um, and just keeping things super simple, we have the same uh, model that's just been trained with a different data set. So the first model was trained with a five times table. This one has been trained with a 10 times table. Uh, enough to give us uh, the variance we need to, to show the results. And in terms of how this will look in uh, our pipeline, we will have our raw data, again, coming from uh, BigQuery. We will parse that data. And we will branch it and send it to both models. This will give us two sets of uh, P collections, which will then flatten together uh, to be able to see the results. So uh, with that, I'm going to move over to the demo. OK, so this is the, 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 the new pipeline. Um, the uh, small difference here is before, where we read from BigQuery, we immediately chained our um, uh, apply, which is the um, the prediction followed by the output. Here we're going to get our P collection, which is questions as a result of reading from big uh, query. And next we're going to apply that twice. So we have the questions P collection that we're going to um, uh, do some, uh, 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 create the tuple with. In this case, the key is going to contain the, the number five because we're going to use the, the model that was trained on the, the five times table data. The same P collection is then again applied. And this is as easy as it is to create a branch in B. You just basically apply as many times as you want the, the, to the, the P collection, the different transforms that you'd like to do against that data. And in this one, we have the number 10 uh, as a uh, value. Now, this gives us two P collections. Um, these P collections contain the same data type. So we can actually flatten them together. Here we have uh, a tuple of these two uh, P collections and we apply the beam.flatten operator. This brings them together in a CPIM, single P collection, um, after which we then run our prediction. So let's run this. And this may take a few seconds. Okay, there we go. So now we have um, uh, the results from passing that data to both uh, models. Um, if we go back to our fourth question one, uh, we see the 1013 giving us 5065. But if we look for the fourth question on the second model, we see that 105 now uh, uh, gives us, uh, where are we? That's the wrong question. There we go. 
fourth question uh, gives us 1013 and the output of uh, 10,128. So our little, little model is having trouble with its 10 times table. Um, uh, but here we have now in this simple change to our pipeline had the ability to create uh, A-B testing. And of course you can have many different models uh, being tested or, or used at the same time. Um, and uh, uh, going back to our slides. So that was a, a model where we've created a, a branch, but of course we can actually create a sequence of models. And a sequence of models allows us to take the prediction from one model and pass it to the first layer of the second model uh, to create this chain of, of, of business logic. Um, in this example, for example, uh, we have uh, voice information that's being run through a speech to text that uh, along with text information is being run into a language understanding model, which is then branching into sentiment analysis, plot recommender, et cetera. So what we would, um, so in these cases, we would have the outputs at this stage. We need to just do a little bit of parsing to get it ready uh, for the input of the next stage. Now, uh, in order to do this with Beam, uh, fairly straightforward, as you'd imagine, um, we have our raw data. And again, in our demo, we're gonna use the BigQuery data. We have this, the, the raw data available. We will pass it to uh, the first model. The output of that, um, we will then do some post-processing on to getting the values ready for the second model. And in terms of the post-processing, what I've done is just manipulated the key so that the pretty print that we have at the end for the, the string can show us the provenance of the data as it moves through uh, these various sequences. Um, okay, moving back to our demo. So um, let's go to uh, this one. And the pipeline again, we have our questions fee collection, which is the read from BigQuery. We then apply the first model to this, which gives us a P collection multiplied by five. Now, the next step, we take that P collection and we do a bit of post-processing. So here we have a Lambda function, which is essentially taking out the bits from that predict log uh, that we need and getting it into the shape that, will, that is required for layer one of the second model. So the multiply by 10 model is then applied to that P collection and we have our output. So let's uh, run this. And again, we should see a couple of models uh, in a moment that are uh, there, uh, uh, being used. So uh, we can see the various models being opened up here. And our results um, are, we're back down to four answers because we now have a sequence. We're not uh, applying multiple models to the same uh, data as the AB test before. So fourth question, and this is that little bit of string manipulation I did um, in, in between. So this is telling me that the original input was 1013, um, it, the first model that predicted 5,065, and the output is what comes out of that second model getting this, this, this intermediate result, uh, which is 50,623. So again, that 10 times cell model is not doing as, as good as it's uh, the other one. But in terms of data engineering, we've now seen uh, how this flow is. Um, all of that was with uh, TFX run inference. Now the, that is uh, uh, with a TensorFlow. Um, the Beam uh, uh, community is currently working on uh, pieces where we take the, all the goodness and all the, the interesting parts of that, that generic piece and make it available with other uh, frameworks. Um, this is ongoing work, uh, but folks can, you know, look at the, the, the design doc from the Apache Beam site. This is uh, uh, available publicly, um, and you can follow along with the work to see uh, that progressing. Um, and with that, thank you. Uh, and, I, and I know this is the last talk, so also thank you for your attendance at Beam, Beam College. Uh, any questions before we close things out?